Hey guys, if you're building a mobile website, then you might have already come across the thought of how are my users going to navigate it? Well, how about a floating mobile nav bar where users can just click a button anytime they want and head to the next part of your page. So let's get started creating it. And as you can see, I already prepared a little um, create react app prefab and I added uh, four icons as SVGs, which we're gonna embed. And yeah, they're basically these icons that I got off feather icon. So to get started, we're gonna head to our app.js and as always, we're gonna remove everything but the div on the outside because we just want a normal React app. So it's right here. And um, we can also head right to the app.css and remove all the unnecessary CSS as well. So we're basically just gonna let this um, text align center right here stay. Now um, we want the site to be dark mode just because I think the navigation looks better in dark mode. You could of course use it in light mode and make a darker navigation, up to you. I'm just gonna go with the background color of gr gray or hashtag 33 for this. And as you can see, this actually doesn't yet update um, much of the app because you also need to set a site of 100 vertical height because the normal app component in React actually doesn't uh, scale over the whole site. Now it does though, so let's continue on by adding a nav element. And this element is going to have a class name called navbar, and that's basically going to be our navbar. So to get started, let's style the navbar. And this navbar element is going to have a background color of white, so hashtag FFF. It's going to have a height of uh, 3 RAM, just for now. Later, the content is going to style the element, but for now, this makes things a lot easier. Next, uh, we of course want it to not move when the side scrolls, so we want it to be position fixed, so that it's on a fixed position on the screen at every point in time. And because fixed actually um, doesn't make the diffs uh, scale over the whole page automatically, we need to set the width to 100%. And we want the um, toolbar on the bottom, of course, so we're gonna say bottom equals zero and left equals zero, just so it's positioned on the bottom. And the next step is um, we of course don't want it to touch the edges, so we're going to add a margin. That margin is going to be um, one rem. And now it unfortunately moves off screen because we set a width of 100% and we added a margin on each side. So this margin actually makes it go off screen. So the way we're going to fix it is we're going to say calc 100% minus two rem. So that's basically one rem on each side. And now it looks fine again. The next step is we're going to add a little border radius that just so we don't have these harsh edges. I personally like 3 rem for this, just so I have this little rounded look. If that's too much roundness for you, then you might also want to go with 1 rem, just to have these rounded edges and not much more. I'm going to go with 3 rem though, because I prefer that look. Now to move on, we're actually already going to add our images. And uh, just so styling is easier, you're going to add a div around them you're gonna see why that is quite soon. So now we of course also need to import our images. I put them inside an assets folder. So we're gonna import the image home from dot slash assets slash home. And we're just gonna put it in here. As you can see, the icon is right here. And now we can actually edit the nav bar CSS again because now we have content that is gonna actually tell the nav bar how big it's gonna be. So this height attribute is now useless. And um, the next thing we can actually do is we're gonna add a padding just so um, the icons don't touch the edges of a navbar. So the pa uh, padding is gonna be one rem. And as you can see, this padding also puts the navbar off screen. So the way we're gonna fix that is we're gonna say box sizing is border box, which basically um, tells HTML that the padding shouldn't um, increase the size of an element, but it should decrease the size of its contents. So this is important because we gave the element a fixed width and we of course don't want the padding to interfere with it. We want the padding to stay in the um, confined um, constraints we gave it with this width element or attribute. So now um, I personally think uh, one RAM is too much. So let's go with uh, 0.7 RAM maybe, just so it's not as huge. The next step is we're gonna say dot navbar div. You basically also don't need this arrow to be honest. And a div is uh, what sets the height of our children. 
So we're going to say a height of 1.5 RAM would probably be nice. And a width of 1.5 RAM would be nice as well. Now the diff also stopped it from centering. So now we got the element right here. And um, the next step is to actually give it a padding of um, 1 RAM maybe. Okay, 1 RAM is definitely too much, maybe 0.5 RAM. And that is because we also want a state where our element is active. As you might be able to see here, there's a little circle around the element. And we're gonna um, just add that right now and toggle it off later, just so we can already style the complete navbar without having to constantly switch between React and CSS. So to do that, we're just gonna say, okay, background color, it's gonna be this harsh gray, just so you can really see it. And um, yeah, I think 0.5 already looks quite nice. And now we're just gonna add a border radius of 50% so that it is round. Now let's actually add um, more of these divs because um, we'll of course have multiple icons. And this will already show you the next issue we have. These things stack because they're in divs. So to fix that, we're gonna go back to our nav bar and we're gonna say display flex. This will make them place next to each other. But the spacing is still off, so we're gonna say justify, ju justify content, space, around. This will basically tell uh, the CSS to have even space between all elements and also have some space at the edges so that the elements don't touch the edges, which of course improves the looks. So. Now the next step would be to also um, edit the images because these don't necessarily scale with the diff and we're going to force them to by just saying width is 100% and height is 100%. I of course don't want to do this to the navbar but to the navbar image. And now the images will always all have the same size independent of what they are because if we added different icons here from different sources then they might actually have different sizes which might cause some issues. This will fix that though. So now let's move on by actually adding something for desktop users because maybe your site will also be used by desktop users. And that is going to be cursor pointer. And um, we can actually add one more thing for desktop users because if you um, now make it full screen, then you can see this looks awful. And the way you can fix that is by actually saying, okay, your navbar is going to have a max width of, let's say, uh, 13 RAM. I don't know. And now if we take a look at that, you can see it still doesn't look perfectly fine, but it looks better. So um, you can tweak this any way you like. I'm just gonna go with like, I don't know, 17 RAM maybe, just so it doesn't take up the whole width. And um, then because it's position fixed, you can also say, okay, I actually don't want left to be zero. I want left to be 50%, so it's centered. And then we're just gonna transform, translate X, minus 50% so that it's centered again, minus 50% of course. And now even in desktop mode, it looks actually quite fine. So now let's add it back to this side right here so we can continue working on the mobile version because now we actually um, need to add some logic right here. So we're gonna get rid of this background because um, we of course don't want every icon to be highlighted constantly, but we only want to do this in one certain case and that is when the class active is set which we're going to do now. So to um, know what element is active, we're going to use state in React. So const active and set active equals use state. As you can see, use state was imported automatically from React. And we're going to say the default highlighted index is going to be zero because normally you'd start on your homepage. You could of course add some logic depending on what URL you're on or whatever. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say, the home page is what um, the user is always going to star on. So now we can actually add this logic already. So our div is actually going to contain that logic. So class name equals active equals zero, 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 uh, equals equals zero. So basically when the active tab is at index zero, so the first one, then set the class name to active, otherwise set it to nothing. Now, as you can see, this element is highlighted. We can also already set um, the logic of setting the active index. 
because that's just going to be an on click event on the div. So on click equals set active zero. So set the active index to zero if the zeroth or the first <laughs> element is clicked. Remember zero based indexing. So now we can just add this logic to every div. This is of course a lot of copy pasting. You could do this with loops or whatever, but for this use case, that's a bit much. So yeah, you can of course optimize it any way you like. So now let's just say three and three right here, two and two right here, and lastly one and one, just so everything should work. And now if you click these, you can see the highlighted um, part actually is moving. So that is working. Now we can also just um, make this a bit lighter because yeah, I think a lighter border looks a lot nicer. You could make it even more light, but um, for the sake of contrast in this video, I'm not gonna make it as light. So now to move on, we um, can of course control this side content with that as well. And um, to make that the easiest possible, we're just gonna add a div. This is basically gonna be a main content div because we can't use the app for the main content right now because it also contains a navbar. So now our content is just gonna be an H1. And um, to make it easier to handle the content because we don't want like a extremely long uh, list of ternary expressions, we are just gonna say, okay, we'll have an array with all the possible values of this H1. So that's gonna be home, that is gonna be um, feed, settings, and maybe um, user. And um, yeah, we're just gonna say we'll get the index oh, um, with the number active from this array, and we're gonna display this right here. So now um, we get some graphical issues, but that's just because of the H1 basically. So to fix that, we're just gonna say, okay, the H1 is gonna have, first of all, a color of white, so that the contrast is better. And it's gonna have a margin of zero because yeah, that's something you could um, handle yourself, of course. And now, as you can see, we switch to these titles using just the navigation. So now you could change these images. And as you can see, we got a finished navigation now that actually works on mobile and also works quite fine on desktop. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please leave a like and tell me what you're gonna do with it because I'm interested in how your sites look and while you're using the stuff I'm showing you. So I hope you're gonna find a use for this and also I hope you'll have a good day.